National Podcast Day is September 30th, but what is National Podcast Day? It's pretty simple and you can help spread the word. National Podcast Day is dedicated to promoting podcasting worldwide through public engagement. You may be asking, what can I do to get involved with National Podcast Day? It's easy. Head over to nationalpodcastday.com and check the suggestions. But ultimately, these options are endless. Remember, September 30th, nationalpodcastday.com. And let's start the conversation. Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Want to have you. your business or podcast featured on the show? Contact us at info at sorgatronmedia.com. Subject line, advertising. But I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail bar set. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Pain for the taste of the blood. Six, six, six. Hey guys, welcome to the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron here in Pittsburgh at the Mayhem Studios, video producer here in, in the area for some local groups like uh, the IWC, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and some other wrestling documentaries and productions. Uh, here with my buddy Eamon at Eamon2, please, announcer for the great Inspire Pro Wrestling down there in Texas. He'll be joining us here after the interview, but in the meantime, uh, you can go check us out. We're at WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can check out all the shows, including this and all the other stuff about mainstream wrestling um and you can also uh drop us a line we're at good times at wrestling mayhem show.com 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline and you can also subscribe to us we're on itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio and video form on youtube as well please comment share it um star it whatever that function is over there uh, so people can find us and also big thanks to basic sickness for our intro music check out more of him at basic sickness dot com um, and you can check us out on twitter at mayhem show wrestling mayhem show on facebook on google plus and the great wrestling mayhem show facebook group where we have a lot of conversation through the week and you can typically uh join us here at 11 p.m tuesday nights at live.sorgatronmedia.com 10 p.m central for amen of course down there in texas uh so our uh, guest this week, a returning guest on the Mayhem Network, we've had him on a couple times on the Wrestling Mayhem show a year ago when he was kicking off his first Kickstarter, and he's got a new one, Mike Kingston, Mike Kingston of Headlocked, the gray comic book is joining us. How you doing, Mike? How you doing? So, uh, for those that don't know, Headlocked is uh, it's been around for a few years. I ran into you, geez, I don't even know when, when was the first time up there in New York at the Comic-Con. What is Headlocked, at least the series overall, uh, so far, for those that haven't checked it out yet? Uh, Headlocked is about a kid who's a theater major, and he falls in love with wrestling, and he quits school, and it's sort of his journey through the business, starting on, like, day one. Um, it's got kind of a cable drama feel to it. Um, we're sort of learning the wrestling business through the eyes of of this character. Um, I think it's... Uh, you know, we're sort of examining the craft of wrestling, um, but at the same time, it's sort of him navigating like the underbelly of the business. Um, so, uh, you know, like I said, it has a real kind of a cable drama vibe to it, and uh, the uh, you know, I think people who like wrestling like it. Um, people who are into comics can can dig it if you like cable dramas. Uh, if you're a process junkie, like there are a lot of different things, uh, a lot of different things that I think would appeal to people. Nice, nice. Now. Um First of all, we like to kind of, you know, obviously you're doing you're doing this, you're doing comic books around wrestling. What was your earliest kind of experience with pro wrestling? What got you into this? It's uh, it's funny because they just put it up, they put up with the old uh, Saturday Night's Main Events on the network the other day, <laughs> and uh, the very first Saturday Night's Main Event is actually what uh, what hooked me. And uh, of all things, it was uh, it was George the Animal Steel. Um, I remember just flipping the flipping through channels. Um, and George Animal Steel was, was biting the turnbuckles and going crazy, and I'd never seen anything like it. And, you know, as a eight-year-old boy, like, I was completely captivated by that. And the next morning on Sunday, like, I found, uh, like, you know, one of the syndicated shows, like Wrestling Challenge or whatever it was, and, uh, you know, I've been watching it ever since, and no breaks, I think we have very similar past there because I know my earliest memory is uh, is the big blue cage with Paul Orndorff 
and Hulk mm. Hogan myself. And I'm, I'm sure I watched a couple before that, but that's that's the one that sticks out for me. Um, awesome. So you did Kickstarter. Well, of course, you actually put out several issues of this beforehand. And uh, last year, like we talked about uh, last year, uh, you, you decided to do Kickstarter to, to kind of proceed. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the process? Um, you know, how how successful was it? And, uh, you know, what, what were you able to do with that? Um, yeah, you know, one of the, one of the sort of things that, you know, I guess the resistance you sort of face when you're an independent on both levels is, you know, both in wrestling and in comics is people, you know, people will give you a million reasons why they think things won't work or why people won't buy it. Uh, you know, cause WWE comic books don't sell that maybe your comic book won't sell or, you know, whatever wrestling fans don't read ever all kinds of nonsense. And you know, so finally, with the advent of Kickstarter, I decided I was just going to take it to the people and, you know, sort of ultimately let them be the judge. I mean, I know the response that I've gotten doing the book, you know, doing the books, uh, selling the books at shows individually. And, uh, you know, I thought that, uh, you know, through Kickstarter, we'd, uh, we'd be able to take it to a wider audience and, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, do a little bit better for ourselves. So uh, we set up funding. Um, we were asking for sixteen thousand dollars, which I know sounds like a lot of money, but uh, you know, there's four different. I mean, well, actually, there were fifteen different people involved in the book creatively, um, between the cover artist, the main uh, penciler, the penciler, colorist, and uh, letterer, pre-press guy, plus the uh, three backup stories and the five pinups. Um, Drew Freelander from Thirty Rock wrote an intro, so he was involved. So it was a there were a lot of people involved, um, and uh, we end up we ended up making uh, twenty seven thousand uh, dollars, none of which I see a dime out of. <laughs> yeah, that's but, all. That's all going into the production for the most part, right? It is. It absolutely is. Um, you know, one of the things we were able to fund is a, is a pretty cool motion comic um, that we put up on uh, YouTube. It's called Headlocked the Face. Um, it's a two person story, and it's voiced by. Uh, Ken Anderson from TNA and uh, Kevin Gill from uh, the Kevin Gill show, JCW. Uh, he did some voiceover work for Saints Row. And, uh, you know, so that was a really uh, a neat thing to put a little motion to it. Um, but ultimately, yeah, we put out a 152-page book. Um, it has uh, short stories from Hurricane Helms, Rob Van Dam, Christopher Daniels, uh, a painted cover from Jerry Lawler, uh, we had art from Ken Anderson and Sam Shaw from TNA and uh, Sin Bodhi also contributed a piece of art. Uh, Rob Schamberger did a pinup and uh, Scott Lost did a pinup for the book. So, so from from the start, it seems like you've you've had a lot of big involvement. Again, I, I think Jerry Lawler was involved from very early on, if I recall. Um, what what do you think is the attraction that you get so many of? Uh, names from not just wrestling obviously uh involved in a project like this you know i think you know i think there's so few products out there you know in the mainstream that treat wrestling well um you know i think you know wwe's had a history of making comic books and had a history of them sucking which is exactly why i wanted to do this um you know, as a lifelong comic book fan, anytime wrestling comics would come out, I would run down to the comic book store and I would buy one on day one and I would take it home and I would invariably be disappointed. Um, you know, from licensed WCW, WCW comics, uh, Battle Mania, you know, at some level they're sort of ironically cute now, but I mean, ultimately they all suck. Nothing, uh, that, nothing that had longevity. That's for sure. You know, none of them, well, none of them were about wrestling. It was all about yeah. wrestlers doing things other than wrestling, fighting demons and, you know, stripping Santa Claus naked in the case of the <laughs> Ultimate Warriors comic book or, you know, Kevin Nash doing his best uh, Mad Max impression in his book. Um, you know, it all just felt like a cash grab and, you know, some attempt for people to sell action figures and whatnot. And the thing I think is cool about Headlocked is that everybody that's involved is passionate about wrestling and passionate about comics. You know, all the wrestlers that, that uh, contribute, and that's why they contribute, is because they're passionate about comics and they, I think they respect what I'm trying to do. Um, and most of them volunteered to help. Um, you know, just, you know, they found my books when I first started out as like a fan, just walking around comic book shows and they come by and buy a copy of the book. And then, hey, 
and be like, hey, anything I can do for you? I mean, Ken Anderson's first words ever to me were like, hey, bro, can I do a cover for you? So not even like, hey, I'm Ken or anything. Like that was his first, that was the first thing he ever said. You know who I am and I want to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was cool. You know, I mean, everybody's been amazing. Uh, Judah Freelander wrote the intro to the book. You know, uh, he came by, he came by my booth. At, uh, I met him in New York Comic Con and then I saw him again at WrestleCon in uh, New York, New Jersey. And he was just walking by and he goes, dude, I effing love your comic book. And, you know, that's, I, I don't know, that makes me happy. That's awesome. So so it seems like uh, the, 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 the content was proven. You're very successful with the first one, uh, going above and beyond with stretch goals on that on that last one. Um, geez, like, well, twice as much, actually. Over twice as much. Wow, that's that, that shows how 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 many people are, are, are down with this idea. So you're going back to the well with Kickstarter again uh, to continue the story. Uh, were there any reservations about doing it again, or you feel a little more confident this time around since you do have th- this base to start, you've started with? Honestly, it's terrifying. Every <laughs> step of the way, like, I don't sleep, I don't eat, I check my email probably every five minutes, um, sometimes less. Um, it's uh, it's nerve wracking because you're essentially putting yourself out there for judgment, and you know, obviously, a successful Kickstarter will depend on what people thought of my first book. So, I mean, most of the, actually, all the all the comments I've gotten so far on the last territory have been overwhelmingly positive. I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about it. Um, but obviously, people vote with their dollars, and you know, we'll see how it ends up. Right now, we're a little bit ahead of where we were for the last one, um, but uh, you know, it'll be uh, ultimately we'll see on uh, November fourth where we end up. I'd like very much to you know to go over our goal. I'd like to do some more motion comics. I'd like to do some animated stuff, and more importantly than anything else, you know, for the the, f- the four or five years I, I struggled at this before I did Kickstarter. You know all the publishers and all the all the sort of the doubters and the naysayers. I'd very much like to stick it up their ass. <laughs> That's awesome, and show you can do it better than uh, WWE is uh, up until now. I know the last one I read with them, uh, I mean, you know what they called it. It was very, very weird. Like wrestlers were getting possessed, and and it, they were oh, yeah, yeah. doing a show in a desert. I know there's a new one so, since that, like Mick Foley's writing. I'm hoping is a little bit better, just because. Uh, but uh, yeah. I- it's not. It's not. <laughs> I mean, it's probably better, but, you know, I don't think it's, I still don't think that makes it good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't think that really has anything to do with Mick's writing ability. Obviously, Mick's a very good writer. I mean, mm-hmm. New York Times bestseller and all that on multiple occasions. It's just, I think when you're dealing with licensed books and heavy handed editorial uh, direction, there's only so much you can do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so uh, we uh, modified what we usually ask on here. We usually ask what's the best and worst sides of, of, of working with indie wrestling. But we've had several people on different uh, sides of it, video announcers uh, all over the place. Uh, so I guess the little spin on this we can do is what's the best and worst thing uh, that you're willing to disclose uh, about uh, indie comic books at this point? Um, you know, my, my process in the comic book industry has been a lot tougher. Uh, you know, people people have a lot of negative things to say about the wrestling business, you know, carny, shady, whatever, but I've definitely been treated a hundred times better in the wrestling business than I have in the comic book side of things. Um, and, uh, you know, the best part about it has been the community. The indie comics community is great. Um, I've been exposed to a um, bunch of amazing creators, um, a bunch of amazing projects, that honestly, as a person who just, you know, going to your comic shop every Wednesday, you wouldn't see um, just because of the, the the system. The current system to me for comics is pretty broken. And I think everybody recognizes that, but nobody wants to do anything about it, um, which is why, I mean, to me, Kickstarter is a market correction. I mean, if I can get $27,000 for my book, then, you know, you would think that a publisher would be... Uh, would want to get in on that, you know, because obviously it can make money, but it's kind of the same way. Uh, it's kind of the same way, you know, like the Zack Ryder thing, you know, he got himself over and they didn't want him to get over. So they buried him, you know? Um, 
that's kind of how I feel like it can be in comics sometimes. Um, I mean, I have, you know, I had seven wrestlers attached to my first one and, uh, and a celebrity on top of that. And, you know, meanwhile, if you were like an extra on heroes, you could probably walk into any comic book studio and get a book tomorrow, you know, but, uh, because it's wrestling, because it's not genre or whatever, people aren't, uh, people aren't willing to take a shot at it and that's fine honestly i don't want i don't want people who don't get it to be involved with it because otherwise it's going to turn into you know wwe comics and you know headlocks body slamming its way to her stores near you and i don't want any of that you know i just want to i just want to do my thing and uh you know just uh i want to i want to do it as long as i can and i think uh I've got a ton of guys that want to still do stuff. I've got more guys lined up for this Kickstarter. Um, you know, I, I mean, I think, uh, I think we can really do something. Awesome. Awesome. So let people know, uh, well, first, how, what's the easiest way for them to get to your Kickstarter and, and let us know what, you, what you're doing uh, this time for pledges. Uh, I know I am uh, sporting, if you're on the video, the awesome headlocked uh, old school t-shirt from the first one specifically uh, uh, sprung for that one. Uh, so what, what do you guys have going on this time around? Um, well, it's, it's funny because some of the bigger pledges have been jumped on. I mean, we've only been up for uh, five days and all of our uh, drawn into the book as a wrestler uh, pledges got snapped right up. Wow. Um, it's insane. It really is. I like right now I have more $500 pledges than I have $15 pledges. So I think that's kind of funny. Um, but uh, you can pledge. Uh, you can pledge for digital copies of the book. Um, you can pledge for a copy of the book. We have. Uh, if you didn't catch on on the first time, because um, this is essentially a continuation, we do have a, a pledge tier where you can pledge for the first copy of the book. Again, um, because uh, because I, we really want people to support us through Kickstarter, we we don't offer the. Uh, the, the books that have the wrestling content, the wrestler generated content is Kickstarter exclusive. So um, this is sort of a way that people can go back if they didn't know about the Kickstarter, they couldn't donate at this t at that time, you know, they can go back and get a copy of the book. The first one, um, anybody that pledges for the second book, you'll get a digital copy of the first book anyway, so you'll kind of know what's what. But uh, we also have tiers for uh, limited edition uh uh, chase cards that were uh, inserted into the WWE top sets that feature Jerry Lawler's art. Um, nice. They're very rare. They're hard to get. Um, we have uh, a couple different sets. We have one higher tier that you can get all three sets. You can get a commission from our artists. Uh, those things, those worked out great last year. The people that all got those were loved it. And actually, one guy's already pledged for another one. Um you can get uh, all three books signed by Jerry. Uh, you can get uh, you can get drawn in into the crowd or into a, in a as a cameo, or you can be drawn in with a uh, speaking role. And I've got, I gave some guys some uh, some really cool spots in, uh, in the last book. Nice, nice. And I, I saw there's a, a few more T-shirts again. Yeah, we have a brand new uh, Evolution style T-shirt, um, sort of done like the. Uh, the, the ape walking into a man when he starts out as a fan and uh, nice. works his way up to the uh, sort of champion thing. And uh, I think that's a really fun shirt. And I'm really happy with how, uh, how the art came out. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and this time too, uh, just when we have some, some big people in comics, um, you know, that have jumped in to support us. Um, we have Jill Thompson. Um, she designed some gear for CM or Daniel Bryan. And she uh, designed that famous CM Punk t-shirt. Um, Fox Brown, who did the Andre the Giant biography, is doing a pinup for the book. Um, nice. Jamal Igle, who did Superhero, Supergirl and uh, is a big wrestling fan. Ben Templesmith, who is responsible, uh, probably best known for the art on 30 Days of Night that became that movie. Um, and uh, Ramon Villalobos, who's, writes for, who's an artist for Marvel that also uh, sort of known for doing pop culture pictures of people, uh, pop culture people putting... Uh, putting themselves into wrestling holds. So if you ever want to see uh, Daenerys Targaryen with a dragon sleeper on, you know, somebody, he's, he's your man. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, so tell everybody, where can they find out about Headlocked in general, the Kickstarter, everything? Uh, the Kickstarter, you go to kickstarter.com and you search Headlocked, The Last Territory, Volume 2. Like I said, if you weren't there for Volume 1, we got you covered. Um, 
And then uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Everything is all headlocked comic, one word. Um, it's my gamer tag on Xbox if you want to play. Um, not Xbox One, mind you, but uh, if anybody wants to go old school. Um, and, uh, yeah, my, my Instagram is kind of fun because I put a lot of ridiculous food pictures on there, too. Nice, nice. And if anybody wants the early episodes, they are available on your website. Yeah, if you go to headlockcomic.com, you can get uh, you can get the old books, but you can also play for them through the Kickstarter as well. Nice, awesome. Go check them out. Headlocked. Uh, he's been doing a really cool thing for several years, and it's it's awesome to see that it's growing uh, in this manner. Uh, thanks, Mike. And uh, with that, we're gonna uh, toss over, bring Eamon in, and talk about some indie wrestling from the weekend. Thanks, Ork, and uh, I guess. It's time to talk about some independent wrestling as we do every week. I know there's some big stuff going up in the PA area. In fact, we have uh, joining us, uh, uh, as he does uh, residently uh, from RWA, uh, Hot Wheels, uh, to talk about, because I believe RWA had a big event this past weekend for Fall Free For All. And uh, So how did the show go this summer? Oh, uh, Eamon, I'll tell you what. It was a lot of fun. I mean, a lot of stress, but, I mean, that's normal for a sound guy. <laughs> uh, we had a surprise visitor in for our main event, which was really awesome, is Ring of Honor's BJ Whitmer came in for a title shot in a fatal four-way. Very, very, which, very big grab uh, from, from the TVs. From the yeah, TVs. yeah, so I was very happy to see that. I was like, when I heard the news, I'm like, really? Really? Am I dreaming? So I had to pinch myself a few times. It threw me a little bit because uh, it came in, and uh, you know I'm used to seeing guys at RWA that I've never seen before. And he says, "Hey, BJ, shakes my hand." And I'm just like, "Nah." He, yeah, Sorg <laughs> looks over at me. He's like, "Who's that?" I was like, "BJ Whitmer." He's like, "Really? I was. That's who I thought it was." <laughs> so Sorg's reaction, I think, was better than mine. <laughs> so the the event was really good. I mean, we had a lot of good matches. Uh, I have to give props to a man known as Cele Sweet Dream Celeste Taylor. This oh, man geez. wrestled twice that night, and both times he wrestled for championships, but came up short. <laughs> uh, but it was incredible matches. Sword actually got to sit beside me, and we actually watched some great matches. Uh, I think one of my favorite moves I saw that night was Patrick Hayes is, uh, he went up for a suplex and just drove the guy over the top rope and like folded him in half. And I'm like, ow, I'm glad I'm not a wrestler. <laughs> but I give props to all the wrestlers. They did very well Saturday night for a fall free for all six. Uh, we had some really weird goof ups and hiccups. If you want to know about those. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you. It comes with yeah. the territory. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Eamon, you should know that any weird hiccup can happen in independent wrestling. And I had the music go goofy. My poor uh, system decided to make a screeching sound that I, at the main event of all of, of uh, the whole time, it went just fine all night. The, end, the whole. Uh, main event, there you go, you get this nice little screeching sound, so I had to turn the machine off. Well, there's an um, overheating I, problem with your system too, right? Like, you guys always have fans on that thing. Yeah, the fans always on, there's like usually two fans or maybe one big one, and it's odd because it wasn't as hot as it's been in that building, mm -hmm. and, and that's the first time I've heard that in a long time. So, I was actually surprised to hear it even overheating when it wasn't as hot as it was, like, last month. So, But everybody, like I said, did a very good job. Uh, unfortunately, during a tag team match, one of our wrestlers got hurt, but he's fine. We contacted him, and he had a concussion. So, but hey, uh, it's good to know that our uh, resident favorite Friend of the show, G Raver is doing fine. Yeah, it was a He's, scary. It was definitely a scary moment too, because I know it was, it was coming yeah. along, and then and all of a sudden, like he would, he, he didn't move, and you can tell the rest was really, you know, kind of figuring out what to do next. There was kind of you know the weird kind of pins kick out. Yeah, it, it, it was. It, and I I'm looking at the results page, and I basically I said the match was a no contest because 
that just was like sort of said a scary yeah. moment because yeah. we didn't know what was going on. Um, so I mean, it, it's it, yeah, and it got it got really interesting. Uh, one of the uh, def- definitely strangest and surreal. Uh, I, yeah, I was I was actually ringside when uh, Gregory Gregory Iron got hurt uh, in Prime. Um, a very similar move. It was a power bomb, right? And um, uh, and he, you know he got stiffed pretty good on. I don't say he got stiffed pretty good. He's, I think it's just a head protect thing when it's a power yeah. bomb. You know, not knowing, not being a wrestler or anything, but looking at the footage afterwards, I think you just knock your head the right way, and and that's it. You know, because um, right. I mean, I look right. I looked back at a different angle, and 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 nothing looked like a severe bump to his head the way he went down. Um, but you know. Yeah. I mean, if your head just, you know, just the right way, it's going to throw your brain, you know, for a spin. Um, and I was, that's my non-medical yeah, I was say, <laughs> description. <laughs> but it, no, it makes it you, you knock yourself loopy type mm-hmm. thing. And I mean, uh, Sorg, you were, I think, there the first time. Do you ever, this is a second like concussion type move from almost a similar action because shane taylor happened that one time but g river actually got up and continued to match that time oh i remember that because re- i remember he wanted to see the footage to figure out where he got concussed at like he yeah because he, he, remem- he didn't remember the rest of the match yeah he didn't remember most of it so we were like looking through he's just like up oh, that's it <laughs> it's it's interesting <laughs> so, i mean I, I i have to say just about my buddy g raver he is the Jeff Hardy of RWA because that boy puts his body through hell. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I was he'll keep going talking to him beforehand about uh, just the week before he was put through a barbed wire table by Sabu. Yes. <laughs> so, and I, you can yeah. tell he, I, he's not, I, I'm sorry to say he's not right. No, 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 no. <laughs> No, no, especially some of the more details I heard about that. Dude, dude is not right in the head. <laughs> um, I mean, I love you, G River, but man. Uh, but I'm glad to see he's well. Um, he, he's one of those that's like, I appreciate what he does so much. Yeah. Um, but it's like, stop doing that. Please don't hurt yourself. No, 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 no. Please don't hurt yourself. <laughs> yeah, we're, I, I don't like, know if we just... I, I would not have do have we just been watching wrestling t- too long that like the hardcore wrestling is like, I oh, know, man. You, you, it's not worth it, man. It's all right. It's all right. You don't got to do that. You know, I know that was for yeah, the fans, exactly. but come on. Um, and I don't know, Eamon, I, you know, I know some of the stuff you were watching uh, when you first got in the Indies down there were pretty, you know, pretty, pretty severe stuff. Like what's your kind of hardcore uh, uh, tendencies uh, when you're watching that stuff? Uh, it's always, it's, I, I think it's a weird sort of mentality um, you sort of get into like being in the business now because you sort of get to know people and then you realize, oh shit, it's really super scary when some of that stuff happens to you. Like, yeah, you know, obviously yeah. like the custom stuff and, and stuff like that. Uh, um, the closest thing, like the, I would say, I guess the scariest sort of like thing actually was at an Inspire show not too long ago. We had um, uh, a female wrestler by the name of uh, Jessica James who did a um, sort of like a, the Undertaker old school tightrope walk sort of thing yeah uh but uh there was some sort of uh, uh i guess uh miscommunication uh, possibly and uh she fell straight on her back to the outside on the concrete oh. and that was not fun uh luckily she like it she it almost was like it didn't phase her in a sense and she just kept going which was kind of crazy um uh she actually had just come off a tour of japan so i i think it maybe that had something to do with it, uh, her ability to, I guess, protect herself. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, good. Oh no. But I just looking at that, it's like, you know, when my coworkers is dead and, and she's, she's up and, and working still, but you know, it's, it's, it's crazy to think, you know, yeah, it's um. I know. I know something happened. Uh, well, let's salute the troops when the tag match went wonky because somebody got uh, knocked knocked the wrong way and got hurt somehow. Yeah, Ryan you know, was. Ryan Reigns right. was. You know, and, his and, neck was like jammed or something. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. just like caught something weird, and, and it's, it's the same thing I heard. I heard Saturday night. He's like, they're like, I've done. We've done that move a hundred times. You know, and, yeah. and nothing's mm-hmm. ever happened. You know, and, and and it just takes one time, and that's the scary thing about pro wrestling. You know, that's why there's a don't yeah. try this at home video on WWE every week. You know, um, uh, actually, the last IWC show that Cage Fury first match, Low Rider comes spinning out. <laughs> 
<laughs> out of the damn ring at somebody ends up uh uh you know uh you know you know across the guardrail like practically in the first row and i'm like that guy's ribs are done you know yeah. uh yeah. uh sammy sammy vera uh mm. that main event for super indie apparently he was out for a bit and they like waved him off and eliminated him and apparently he came to and fired up and they let him wrestle and get, <laughs> get eliminated the way he was supposed to get eliminated or something it was a weird moment but it was a scary moment there too you know mm. um but they worked around and actually turned into a really interesting spot so <laughs> you know yeah because so. everybody blew up when he got up you know uh, after mm-hmm. they thought like yeah. oh he's done really oh like oh he's really he might really be hurt you know um and i think i, I think i talked to rough afterward and like no he was out for 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 a minute there um so uh, yeah it, it is super scary and then when you see stuff like the barbed wire whatnots and everything and they do mm-hmm. i mean i and i think even the, the wrestlers that do do that um you know from the discussions i've heard you know they are like okay how do you want to take that you know what's the okay what's the way that's going to suck the least out of this you know yeah exactly um uh, so so it's good to see they're not just like wantonly like being violent and and haphazard with things uh so it's good to see in the long run i guess um i mean it was it was nice as a side attraction to see the bloody battle royal that happened with jcw there were light tubes all that kind of stuff you know uh and 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 you know but they didn't do too much you know during the show like they used to Uh, and i think that's i think people have of course, and there's there's plenty of people I'm, I'm sure out there that are just like, yeah, I want to see the blood, you know, oh, this, you know, just like ECW, man, ECW, ECW, you know. But I think, um, I think that I think that crowd is waning a little bit. Um, they're coming out yeah. for the once in time things. Like I think the uh, from the sounds of it, the VOW guys will end our ECW night there with Sabu, G Raver, Balls Mahoney. Um, I, it sounds like they did very good with it. So there is a flavor for that. But you can't go to the well too often. <laughs> yeah, I was going to um, say you don't want to overdo that because it just it oversaturates it, and everybody's like, "Okay, I've just seen it already." So mm-hmm. that's why I kind of like the differences of like the VOWs, the IWCs, the RWAs, the PWXs, because they all have their own flavor of atmosphere and type fans. I was- because it, it, you don't want to have the same thing at every company. Mm-hmm. And some of them have mandates on it. I was told by one promoter recently, there's two things I don't like. I don't like swearing and I don't like blood. So, right. you know, so um, you- I mean, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, but anyways, no, but RWA again, picking it up. Uh, I love that, uh, you know, BJ was there, uh, in the main event. It's, it's, uh, it, it's cool to see that the momentum's still going from the Matt Hardy show you guys had last month. Um, also really yes. cool. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Monroe. Am I getting that name right? I always mess mm-hmm. it up. Yes, yes. Uh, she was fantastic. Yes. I I remembered how much I loved it from her and VOW at the at the maximum. Yeah. Uh, the uh, jeez, uh, what do they call Vixen Mayhem? Whatever that show was, we went uh, to. Yeah. Um, uh, I think it was Max Maximum Mayhem. There's Maximum Mayhem was the next night with the guys, but there there was yeah, the yeah, Vixen, yeah. Vixen Mayhem the day before. Yeah. I mean, I, and, and I could tell because I'm I'm watching. I I didn't I didn't switch. We actually let JP, um, the guy that's been doing videography for was with us for like two years now. I was doing the math. Um, uh, we're going to see about him switching, so I don't have to be the guy on wrestling anymore. Uh, if something else should come up, like I'm actually going to be out of town next month for RWA. Um. So it'd be nice to have the option, and and he's very capable. Uh, but I'm watching, I'm watching the monitor on it, and I, I I look. She's the one that'll put like somebody in a leg lock, and turn over, look at the camera, and blow it a kiss. You know, <laughs> I was like, mm-hmm. yes, I remember her. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she that, kept... I mean, she worked very well with Jesse Bell. I mean, I enjoyed mm-hmm. watching that Great match. match, and and I was really really impressed with it. And it's good to see that we had somebody that was a rosebud. <laughs> mm-hmm. Somebody's been on WWE TV uh, recently as a rosebud. She's been around. She is she the one? Is she the one that's been working with ROH as well? Like as a as a kind of a yes. Uh, uh, okay, because I thought I saw her because I, I tried. I failed to get it back in the Ring of Honor, but I was watching the pre pay per view show, and I thought that was her on there. Um, so yeah, she she's in there. Hence why we were able to. She's friends with BJ. And- yeah, yeah. She said, hey, do you want to go to RWA to check out? And he's like, sure. And he talked to Derek and said, hey, is it okay if I 
work. Derek's like, duh, sure. Come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's great. That's a silly question. <laughs> That's awesome. And of course, you guys had a big announcement. Salute the truce. We mentioned it over on the Mayhem show as well. The Wrestling Mayhem show as well. Uh, but you guys have some big names. Uh, of course, Shane Douglas, who's been there before, was there last month with Matt Hardy um, coming back, as well as Sanjay Dutt, who's always a favorite I've seen in IWC. Um, I have some great, great matches. Uh, and uh, Hurricane Shane Helms. I love it. I love it. Yes. That, 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 I'm really excited. When I heard the announcements for those, that talent, I went, there we are. We're still, like you said earlier, we're rolling along with the whole continuing mm-hmm. to build the RWA product with stars and our locals and everything and keeping that crowd happy. Yeah. So yeah. And, I'm looking and forward that's a, to. Go ahead. Oh, and it's, it's just like what got me into IWC. You know, uh, have those big names that get people in the door and, and your talent has to deliver, you know, and, and yes. keep people to coming back you know, for those in between shows and everything. And, and, and I think, you know, it, it, it's kind of showing and I love the new look of everything. It's looking good on video. We're still adjusting a few things, um, as far yes. as the look on video. But then again, like the first time we did court time with those, that light set up, we had no idea how to light the thing, you know, um, yes. you look at pure talent, which was the first show that we did on the Sogatron media banner. Uh, I'm not happy. With it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, it's something you grow into. It's yeah, something yeah. it's like, I learn. it's a learning lesson. It's like Saturday, uh, uh, Eamon, Sorg will tell you, we switched even the tables around. Sorg was still beside me, but I was closer to the entrance way mm-hmm. and, and stuff and things moved around and it, it seemed to flow better in my eyes of, the way things looked, Sword wasn't close to the speakers anymore. He didn't have to go to go deaf. <laughs> so, yeah, that so kind of helped that. out. So, anyways, yeah, go check it out. Uh, we'll have. I actually did principal edit on it today. I know I didn't do any this month. I'm not doing any insane. I'll have it edited by the morning stuff. But uh, there was a couple of things <laughs> I needed to address on there. Um, so, so that'll be together. I'll get wrap up up this week. And you'll be able to get that on digital download at com slash store uh, as usual. Um, geez, there was something else that happened on there. Oh, VOW, August on August Onslaught, was it? No, August uh, Annihilation, yeah, because it's alliteration. I was going to say, it sounds like August, the proper I think it's October Onslaught. <laughs> September yes, yes. Sin, I think, was this last one. Uh, but no, October, whatever, August. What a, ah. Uh, uh, it, hurts it, hurts it hurts me. It was Annihilation. But uh, no, we have the VOW show from August on, the, I mean, on I mean, digital download. August since when it, we we don't have a time machine. To so go check that out at seven. Yeah, just... Go check that out on the on on the thing on the on the dot com slash store. Um, so Amen, there's a, a, a few shows coming up. There's some really cool stuff this weekend, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, probably, honestly, one of the coolest indie things is happening this weekend, and oh. I think it's apropos that we talk about it, because this weekend is King of Trios weekend, Sorg. Mm-hmm. The big uh, three-night event from uh, Chikara Pro Wrestling is bringing it back uh, upon the resurgence. Uh, there's there's an interesting lineup. It's a very different lineup to uh, past King of Trios. Uh, still a very good lineup, but I think people will notice that it's very... the As far as the actual trios go, a lot of them are very much Shakara based trios. Uh, you can tell they're definitely going for a particular story uh, with their stuff that they're doing uh, with the um, the flood, which is sort of the um, the group that's been trying to take down Shakara. Uh, they, they definitely have a big influence in this tournament, so I, I would expect a good deal of, of, of storyline and 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 that's come from this. But you've got some really cool, you know, uh, definitely interesting teams like the Spirit Squad, uh, who are are returning uh, to uh, to professional wrestling, I guess. Uh, uh, they're they're involved in the team. They have a Team UK uh, featuring some young talents that are that I hear really good things about. Uh, so there's a lot of really cool stuff on on uh, this lineup. Uh, some of the real cool, like interesting star power, actually, I think comes in the uh, the second and third night, uh, where they have uh, some really cool stuff. Um, uh, uh, some cool non tournament matches. Of course, they have the Reign of Aladoras tournament, which is their uh, sort of high flyers uh, tournament. They've got people like Tigre Udo, Sonata from TNA. Uh, Chuck Taylor, Rich Swan, there's some, and mixing up with some Chikara things as well. Uh, one smooth sailing Ashley Remington, uh, who looks very similar to a current IWC champion, uh, is taking on Yoshi Tatsu uh, from uh, former WWE star Yoshitatsu. So I think that'll be a very good match, as well as the 
Battle of the Bowtie Sword uh, as Juan Francisco de Coronado takes on TNA's Rockstar Spud. Uh, and for me, that should sell you on at least night two alone. Uh, and I, I think there's some really cool stuff that's coming from uh, this weekend of shows. Uh, like we mentioned, it's uh, King of Trios 2014. This is in Easton, Pennsylvania. Nights 1, 2, and 3 are the 19th through the 21st, so this weekend, Friday through Sunday. Uh, and if you can't go to the event, uh, you can uh, go to SmartMark Video and SMVOD to pick up uh, the, uh, the events when they come out on DVD. And SmartMark usually is very quick, especially with King of Trios, uh, as far as busting those out. So um, I, I would expect you to get uh, to uh, get those uh DVDs or video on demand within the week, actually. Nice. Uh, it's, they're, they're really fast with it. So um, definitely go check them out. Uh, King of Trios, uh, I mean, Sorg, you've been to King of Trios before. It's yes. a, it's very much an event. Uh, it's not just a series of wrestling. It shows. is. It is. Uh, the fan conclave is really cool. Everybody's real cool to talk to you, uh, play play connect four with you and, and or whatever the case may be uh it looks like they have some other they actually have a potluck cookout happening one of the days as well on, yeah on, uh, right before night three, that's pretty so. tremendous um it's that's great and then if you want i really at least listed on their website some of the stuff for the fan conclave there's a live wrestling trivia game uh a technico family feud uh wrestler photo booth a no mercy video game tournament and various other uh games and contests and, and like you like I you mentioned so you can do this with the stars of Chikar. I will. Something. I will warn you. You probably want to watch out for Chuck Taylor on that No Mercy tournament. Like <laughs> I, I know he is a big fan of that that Japanese version. Um, so uh, that that I'd watch out for him on that one. Just just throwing a tip out there. Um, no, you know, it, it's always like at these events and and everything like the that crew. I don't know what it is about that crew they got down there. It's probably like the coolest group of people in pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but they are attracting guys like this Remington fellow and, and the people that they are like, I think there's, um, I mean, uh, it, it, it's one of those promotions that's there for the love of wrestling, you know, versus definitely, it feels like other motivations with some other promotions. Um, but there's, there's, there's a, that there's a special vibe there, uh, when you're there in person, uh, in any capacity. Um, and, and I recommend anybody, this is, this should be, I think this should be for most wrestling fans, like if you if your WrestleMania isn't your WrestleMania that you go to, this should be your WrestleMania you go to. You know, I, 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 if you're at least in the Northeast, I mean, really, mm-hmm. it's it's worth the up to ten hour drive or so, you know, to get out. There. I mean, they attract people from everywhere, so yeah, I think that's you know, it I, it, it definitely feels like a WrestleMania. I event. mean, yeah. if if the people that we know that are traveling from from the mid states to California for for PWG, mm-hmm. uh, this is this is bigger than PWG. You know, I mean, this is. I mean, you go and you have three nights of tremendous wrestling and look at those names and, and uh, good, good for Chikara. Definitely. So definitely go check them out. Certainly. Uh, there's also stuff, I, I believe, sort of happening in your area this weekend as well on the 20th for, uh, for IWC. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah something called IWC <laughs> Saturday Night Frights, or I'm calling it, thank God it's not Friday Fright Night Fights because those suck. And I would, be actually booked for that um yeah <laughs> <laughs> another great match uh facade versus sammy guevara who's it was ripping it up here in iwc uh, up here um and and uh i can't believe he comes away from texas john mcchesney versus asylum uh asylum also impressing and also he you may recognize him as i believe he played the doctor on uh, on raw within the past year um mm-hmm. uh, i forget who was involved well, paul in, Heyman's paul uh, Heyman's doctor yeah with psychologist or whatever something uh, yeah. like that chess flexor versus uh andrew palace they keep saying this chuck roberts likes saying this the stds flare up Appropriate. There you go. Uh, and of course, faces to change the big, uh, the the big reveal of who those were. A bunch of trainees coming in, and it looked real good beating everybody up last month. Uh, also, according to this poster, uh, we got Night Riders. We got Jock Sampson going to be there as well. Colin Delaney, Keith Hot, um, and uh, Matt Justice. A bunch of uh, the usual faces in IWC. Mm-hmm. It should be fun. I'll be there. Just me, no camera crew. Just me, because that's how we're doing these shows up in white oak um so go say hi to me but not too much because i'll be very, he'll be working i'll be, working. I'll be doing his th- i'll be doing my work he'll be doing his their his because, thing as they say because as it's, the kids say. it's just me it's just me guys <laughs> um 
So like, I have a, I have a lot of solo filming work this weekend. <laughs> I noticed <laughs> uh, between that and football. So, um, and I think you also have something very Canadian. There is something very Canadian happening uh, this weekend. Uh, uh, one of the a company that I've talked about a good deal that uh, is really doing some really cool stuff, and that is Smash Wrestling has an event on the 21st, which is this Sunday in Toronto. Uh, and it's one of their bigger events that they do every year uh, focused around uh, women's wrestling, and that's the Canusa Classic. Uh, obviously, the can representing Canada and the USA being the USA. It's a, a uh, Canada versus USA uh, sort of tournament, tournament in a sense, uh, basically – uh, there's uh, captain teams, uh, and there will be seven matches. Uh, and basically, the uh, for the team that gains the most matches wins the uh, uh, the Canusa Classic. I know USA uh, triumphed over Canada uh, last time, and uh, they're they're upping it this time. Last time it was five on five, and this time they're uh, uh, seven on seven. Uh, so they're definitely increasing it. A lot of really good talents with people on the show. Uh, the uh, uh, Canada team is captained by Lufisto, uh, and, and a lot of good Canadian talents uh, on that side. Uh, the American side, Captain, by, by uh, one awesome Kong, uh, formerly known as Karma. Uh, and there's some really cool people in there, Alice K, Veda Scott, uh, Cherry Bomb. Uh, and uh, uh, Spanish Wrestling's been producing some really good stuff as of late, definitely, uh, content-wise and also show-wise. Uh, they, they bring in some really cool talent uh, uh, from across, you know, uh, across the world, really. Uh, and there's, there's some really cool stuff on this card. And, and this is one of their bigger events. Uh, so I encourage you to go check that out. That's in Toronto this weekend, uh, September 21st at the Can Land Sportsplex. So uh, if you want more information on that, you can go to smash-wrestling.com and then go check them out. So if you like some women's wrestling, if you like some Canadian wrestling, and 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 you get and you get nothing to do that weekend, that would be the show to check out. Awesome. And uh, with that, my, hey, man, it's been fun. We had a great conversation there with Mike Kingston. Go check out his Kickstarter. Look up uh, Headlocked Last Territory Volume 2. Uh, a lot of great stuff. Uh, like I said, I, dig, I still dig the t-shirt I got uh, from them for last year's Kickstarter in a really good book as well. And go check out that uh, 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 Ken Anderson uh, motion comic that he did too. That's, that's really cool that he was able to kind of get that out there. Uh, so with that, Eamon, he's at... And Eamon, too, please, on the tweets. Go, please go check out the promotion he works with, uh, Inspire Pro. InspireProWrestling.com. That's right. Plug, plug. Great. <laughs> In the Instagrams and social medias, go go follow, like, wherever you like to do that. And, of course, I have everything over at SorgatronMedia.com uh, for this and other podcasts. And, of course, WrestlingMayhemShow.com for everything wrestling. You have, like, five different shows now. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. You had There's to start another one, and I, I'm not even involved in the new one at all. I wasn't involved in the last two at all, actually. I, <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's, it's, it's growing. We're growing our little empire here, and it's very, it's 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 great to see. Uh, so with that, hey, big thanks to uh, again Basic Sickness for our intro and ex- outro music. Go check them out at basicsickness.com. Um, like I said, we're at wrestlingmamshow.com. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, Spreaker. Look for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And look for Indie Mayhem Show independently or the Wrestling Mayhem Show Super Feed to get everything on some of those platforms. Um, you can also check it out at Mayhem Show on Twitter or Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook, on Google+, Plus. the great Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show. A lot of talk happening there as well. Um, and uh, uh, with that, uh, thanks, Eamon. And uh, you guys go support some indie wrestling. Never said I was a gangster or thug, but I'm an animal. Made up for the taste of the poor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down.